Police officials in Sacramento, California have released new footage involving the shooting and the death of Stefan Clark. He was the unarmed young black man who was shot and killed because police had mistook him for an individual who was burglarizing cars. Now, we had seen surveillance of this prior to what the police had released, but currently we have 23 in-car camera videos and 28 body camera videos. This is all an attempt to be as transparent as possible with the community. Obviously, we can't show you all those videos, but we did find some of the more relevant components. Now, one of the things that the police officials are investigating is whether or not the cops waited too long to issue CPR after shooting Stefan Clark. They waited about five minutes. According to reports, officers waited about five minutes before attempting life-saving CPR. They also had handcuffed him prior to doing CPR. Now, according to reports, they approached him as soon as was safely practical. By the way, this is from a police training expert. From what I am seeing and hearing, the officers, in my opinion, exercised good tactical decision making. I read you that quote because, again, it comes from a police training expert and gives you a sense of how these police are trained. Now, with that said, I want to show you a series of videos. Let's take a look at the first one. Um, this essentially shows them waiting uh, after shooting and killing Stefan Clark. It's caught. Hey, see if he's can you okay. hear us? Police can department, hear us? can you hear us? We need to know if you're okay. We need we need to get you medics, but we can't go over there and get you help unless we know you're you don't have a weapon. Hey, you guys, are you good right here? I'm good here. Yeah. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go yeah. give the correct address for this place. Well, we put it. Yeah, it probably is. He put it out. He put it out. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir, can you move? Can you hear us? You just, and that's it. Hmm? He didn't move after that. Okay. Okay. So this is exactly what we've been telling you guys. The training is all wrong. So that so-called training expert says they did it perfectly. That's doing it well. That's doing it well. Sir, can you move? No, because you shot him. It's obvious that he's unconscious. So I grant you that there is a small percentage chance that he's faking it. What's the percentage chance that he's faking it? 1%, maximum 5%, you saw the video, right? What is the percentage chance that you could save his life if you responded immediately? When he appears to be unconscious and bleeding out. If you didn't wait the five minutes as he's bleeding out, the chance of saving his life could be fairly high. I, of course, it's impossible to know in that specific case, but this happens all across the country. Could we save 25% of those people's lives, 50% of their lives? But what the cops are taught is your life is worth so much more than the guy you shot. The guy's life that you shot is not at all that important. I mean, God forbid, though, he should, instead of being unconscious and bleeding to death as it appears, Maybe it's a giant bear trap, so don't take 1% a 1% chance. Let him just die. So I don't know why anybody's surprised. We've seen it in video after video after video. The cops are taught to let us die. So that's the training. And then afterwards, the training expert says, bravo, way to let him die right there in the street. And remember- Actually, to be more accurate, sorry, in his own backyard. It was his own backyard. Um, he was living with his grandmother, and again, he was not the person burglarizing anyone's car. Uh, he also did not have a gun. Uh, he had a cell phone, and cops uh, assumed that that was a gun. You, okay, and, 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 and by the way, you should watch the original video where we show you how the shooting unfolded because there were very few questions asked. He had run away from the cops. They approached him, and he ran into the backyard. and. Cops, you know, they didn't fire their weapon one time. There wasn't one or two bullets involved. There were dozens of bullets involved. And the reason why I'm pointing that out to you is because any reasonable human being would know after firing your weapon dozens of times, it's likely that he was shot and it's likely that he is dead, right? You don't need to wait five minutes to approach him and see if there's any possibility you could save his, it, save it his drives, life. It drives me crazy that we have conversations about whether he did a burglary or not do a burglary. And oftentimes, well, at some point he might once he got in school detention for smoking pot after you executed him. 
You're not supposed to execute people who did burglaries, even if he had done it. And have you ever been in your backyard with a cell phone? My guess is yes, I've been in my backyard many times with a cell phone. Well, if cops come in and you happen to be black, and if boy, God help you if you're in a poor area, or if you're black in a rich area and in your backyard with a cell phone, that apparently is cause to not only shoot you, but to make sure that they don't save your life. Can you move? No, he can't move so because you just shot him. Okay, so we have a few more videos that I want to show you. Uh, let's take a look at the next video. It features an officer um, mentioning that he could be faking it. He hasn't moved at all. He hasn't moved at all. Okay, let's have the next unit get, just bring a non-lethal in case he's pretending, but let's just, in case. Yeah, that's it, that right there is the essence of what we teach cops these days. Make sure that you're a coward and just in case, just, 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 just in case, he might have a nail file on him or something, make sure that he dies. And then when you get there and he's bled out for five minutes because you won't do CPR on him, handcuff him first. Just in case you get a hangnail or something, just in case a cop would ever be in this much danger, let him die, let him die, let him die. That's what we train them and then we tell them bravo afterwards. Then we get surprised, hey, why, why do we have a problem in America? Because the citizens are not enjoying getting murdered. We're not enjoying it. And when we say black lives matter, they go, ah, no, blue lives matter. No, you already taught them that. You already taught them that the only thing that matters is cops lives. So, so there's I'm not at all surprised by this. And it's gonna happen in your neck of the woods too. So I wanted to also bring up another component of the story that um, should concern people. Because although the cops were wearing body cameras, uh, in multiple uh, or throughout these videos, they kept muting the cameras. So you couldn't hear any audio. So the reason why I bring that up is because why, if you are doing everything right and you're following protocol and you have no reason to hide anything no reason to be guilty why do you keep muting your mic so the los angeles times report i'm sorry huffington post reports that both sets of video show officers muting their body cameras the police department issued new guidelines earlier this month following the first video release allowing officers to mute body cameras only if they're talking to a doctor nurse or paramedic or when working with sexual assault or rape so they're also required to explain on the recording why they're about to mute or deactivate activate the camera. And so obviously uh, none of those specific cases applied uh, when it came to this shooting. This new policy uh, occurred after the shooting because I'm guessing the police department realized, well, they're muting their cameras. This is a problem. People are going to be suspicious about that. Look, we're dehumanizing the cops too. Uh, so <sighs> a normal human being rushes in to save that guy. But we train them to not have normal human reaction. We train them that that's not a person there. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. God forbid that anything should happen to you. That guy's life is not at all important. So let him die, let him bleed, let him bleed, let him bleed. And then go handcuff him to add insult to injury. And keep yelling, hey, are you okay, <laughs> are you okay? Look, I'm not saying that the, those cops there were particularly cruel or terrible people. I'm not saying that cops are by definition natural cowards, of course not, they're human beings. We train it into them, we train fear into them. We train them to be cowards and we train them to not have human reactions. We train them to not care about our lives. That is deeply concerning. There are cops everywhere, they're supposed to protect us. Instead, they have been taught to not give a damn about our lives said it before, it's a society thing, right? Sorry, Anna. Mm -hmm. um, cops are members of society. Then they go to work and put on the bulletproof vest and the hat and the gun and the, all the equipment, and then they're cops. So our whole society, we did those studies, I feel like I'm, this is deja vu. We did the studies about how uh, teachers punish a kid in second grade. If it's a black kid, they think that they see them as like a 13 year old or something like that. So then when cops who are just other parts of society shoot people, they go, well, he must be pretending because you know he's black. He's got these superpowers. They're stronger than the normal human being. So if I shoot him 12 times, he's just not dead yet because they're superpowers. They're these creatures that just, they're, they're so strong, they scare me every day I walk. The lady in Starbucks that called cops on the guys that are sitting there waiting for a friend. She's a lady in Starbucks. If she was in, uh, became a cop, she'd just be another lady that used to work at Starbucks that became a cop 
that was given a gun to continue with the same thought Mentality. process that they must be a threat because they're sitting here. So it's it's a problem with society, and becoming a cop gives you this extra authority to then apply lethal force to the situation that you were already afraid of before you ever became a cop. Of course, I'm generalizing for all cops, but you know that already. I shouldn't no. have to keep saying that. Well, first of all, studies bear out that that is the reaction of most people in America, let alone cops. Uh, but specifically, there was a study that we reported on uh, where they show cops pictures of in what appear to be like real life situations. They're doing it, at obviously, a model. Uh, and they shoot uh, black guys quicker and more often than they shoot white people. If you want to get the whole Young Turks show every single day, become a member, tytnetwork.com slash join. And once you do, you'll be saying, You know, I'm like a smart person. Or you might say, I think it's weird. Or you might say, Oops. No, that won't be that one. It won't be that one. It'll be great, trust me. tytnetwork.com slash join.